a March Madness, Madden Monday, and Madden Ben's unfiltered. Who would have thought we'd see it with Duquesne in the tournament? But they're there. Pitt is not. Pitt's not going to the NIT. And Kenny Pickett is no longer a stealer. Lots to get to. Tim Benz and Mark Madden with you. Brought to you by Rush to Crush Cancer. It's more than a bike ride. It's a mission. Join us May 19th for the Rush to Crush Cancer bike ride. To register, go to rushtocrushcancer.org and help us in the fight against cancer. Join the ride. Thanks for being patient for us getting the Madden Monday podcast posted. Uh, that's on me getting back from Brooklyn after Duquesne won the A-10 tournament. We had some travel issues getting back from Brooklyn, so had to be a little late putting up the podcast. But plenty of good content there, and you'll get a lot of it here as well. And Mark, let's just start with it. You're a Duquesne alum. What do you think? Your alma mater in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1977. Norm Nixon, baby. I think it's terrific. The Duquesne is in and Pitt isn't because Pitt refusing to play Duquesne in the city game, which is why the city game doesn't exist anymore. Not because Duquesne don't want to play, but because Pitt absolutely refuses to play. Pitt got a yellow streak down its back when it comes to playing Duquesne. Won't do it. Feels a loss could damage. But this year, ironically, had the city game been played, a win over Duquesne might have helped Pitt get into the tournament. At least it would have helped really this record. Yep. Mm-hmm. That would have been real currency. So Pitt getting exactly what it deserves and validating itself as a school of big friggin' babies by not going to the NIT. Kenny Pickett, big baby. Pitt basketball, big babies. You know, another thing that Duquesne did to Pitt, Mark, was it soaked up one of the bubble bids because Dayton would have been a one and done for the A-10, but Duquesne beat Dayton. Duquesne got the bid itself, the automatic bid. Dayton gets in anyway, so that's one less bid that Pitt maybe would have gotten. Now, I don't know if Pitt was like literally the next team out, but they were one of probably the next four Oh, Tim, I like to think that Pitt was literally the next team out (laughs) for the purposes of our conversation. Yes, yes. And, and, And Pitt really does the basketball community in Pittsburgh, a grave disservice by refusing to play the city game. Because let's face it, we're not a college sports town, let alone a college basketball town. But that city game was something a lot of people got behind that drew a big crowd that had some enthusiasm. It felt like the city championship. And furthermore, Pitt fans got a lot of nerve saying that playing Duquesne in basketball is beneath Pitt. When Pitt fans whine like scalded dogs because Penn State won't play them in football. It's exactly the same thing. Mark, another thing to bring up in this context, because I do want to ask you about Pitt deciding to not go to the NIT. I wonder how it would have gone over. Let's just say for the sake of argument, VCU beats Duquesne in the final. Duquesne would have gotten an NIT bid. I'm nearly certain of it. What if Pitt then preemptively says we're not going to the NIT when they could have hosted the city game, sold the place out and had that as an NIT date. I bet you, cause I bet you they would have done the same thing and avoided playing it. They, even they, though there was- sure they, they, they don't want to play Duquesne no matter what, because they see that Duquesne's program, if not comparable is getting closer and certainly got closer this year and may arguably have been better this year. And they don't want to, absorb the damage, the perceived damage done by losing to Duquesne, although that's overthinking it. It's just a basketball game. Pitt used to lose to Duquesne once in a while when the city game was regular. I mean, I'm talking recently. They used to lose to Duquesne a lot back when. Mm-hmm. But, but, I mean, what's the harm of losing that basketball game? Um, well, the way the, the uh, tournament brackets work, I mean – there's nothing to be gained from playing NC A and T. I know that. I mean, you're talking about what's to be risked. There's just nothing yeah, to be gained. Tim, for, forget, forget about that. Forget about getting in the tournament for a second because ain't neither of those teams ever winning the NCAA tournament, ever. Like I said on the Mad Monday podcast, the bigger takeaway for Duquesne even is that they won the A-10. That's a banner. That's a championship. That's up in the rafters forever. But, you know, Duquesne and Pitt is just, good for basketball it's good for college athletics in Pittsburgh all right Mark let's get to the other guy you mentioned from Pitt Kenny Pickett when you were talking about petulant 
Is his petulance the reason why he's a Philadelphia Eagle now? Or if he had accepted being the backup to Russell Wilson, do you think the Steelers would have been content with that? Or once the asking price got all the way down to a sixth rounder, would they have just pulled the trigger, gone for Justin Fields, and traded Kenny anyway? Well, I prefer the term big baby for Pickett. And, or maybe idiot works too, because he went from being in a position in Pittsburgh playing behind a quarterback 10 years his senior to go into Philadelphia where he'll be playing behind a quarterback that he's two months older than. Kenny Pickett two months older than Jalen Hurts. And Jalen Hurts is far superior to Kenny Pickett, far superior to Russell Wilson. So Pickett put himself in a situation where, barring injury, Tim, he's the ball boy in Philadelphia. He's much worse off there than here. Maybe he feels it's a fresh start. If so, good for him. I think the Steelers are well rid of his attitude. Now, in terms of the A-B era, the selfish me first type of Steeler player, the last man standing is George Pickens, and I want to see how that works out. A little bit of an aside to this, Mark, sort of a sidebar conversation to it. We can circle back to Pickett, but I always like to kind of think one step ahead when it comes to the Steelers and their quarterback situation because, like, for instance, the Russell Wilson signing, all right? If it works out and he does well, he's going to cost significantly next year. Like, I I know you and I were both in the camp of... It depends how well, and it depends how many wins, but yeah. Yeah, so like, I know you and I were both in the same boat in the sense that we wanted to see Cousins. Like, we wanted to see them make a move for Cousins, spend the money on the quarterback. If you're going to go for now, he was the best choice for now. Cousins, right, yes. By far, because even though he's only won the one playoff game... He gives you over 25 touchdowns and about 4,000 yards every single year. Because my point is, if it does work out with Wilson to the point that you want to keep him, and you can, we can couch work out, whatever that means, but if they get to the point where they want to keep him beyond this year, he's going to cost more next year than what Cousins is going to be next year. So really, your bargain at quarterback is only for one season. I, I, I don't know about that, Tim. What's Cousins' average annual value? What was 45 over four, right? Yeah, 45 average annual value. Yeah. They're not going to pay Wilson that no matter what, unless he wins the Super Bowl and maybe not even then. Um, Shorter term deal, perhaps. They don't have to worry about the back end, but my point is it's going to be close. Okay, then Fields is the starter. Okay, Boy. like they're not going to win a Super Bowl. There won't be that much pressure to win, bring Wilson back if he wants too much money, so... Then Fields gets transitioned in. I've always felt the plan, you know, since they got Fields a couple of days ago, is that Wilson starts and mentors, Fields learns and inherits. Is this what they were kind of thinking about doing with Haskins before he passed away? Is this like a different version of that plan? I, I, I mean, Haskins seemed like he was on another planet. You know, I, I think Fields, despite being a turnover machine, there's, there's, I mean, is he labeled a diva? I don't think so. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just think it's a better plan than the one they had. Now, you're not always going to go from plan A to plan B and have plan B work egregiously so, but I think mm. it's the right move. I think Wilson's a better quarterback for this year, for sure. Um, does he get them well, much better? There's something to be said for that. I mean, they haven't won a playoff game in seven years. It probably won't this year, but at least they're doing but something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're doing something at linebacker too with Patrick queen. What do you think about that? Mark? I've I've talked to people. I know a couple of people in Baltimore split opinions about whether or not he's a product of having played with Roquan Smith. I think he's better than that. What do you think? I think he is better than that. And I, I think while playing with Roquan Smith certainly helped because it would help anybody, you know, playing alongside a talent like that at inside backer. Don't forget. He'll be playing alongside Mick Fitzpatrick and T.J. Watt and Cam Hayward, and he won't have to be the guy here. Just because he's not lined up right next to a guy like Roquan Smith at linebacker doesn't mean there aren't talents capable of freeing up space for him here in Pittsburgh. And I also think, you know, a Landon Roberts for what he is, you know, he's a run stuffer, but he's also a smart guy that can wear the green dot and just have Queen do everything else if that's what – the Steelers prefer to do he's good enough yeah he's good enough as a second guy uh if Queen can be the first guy you know like I would say 
the age is different. Like the age variance is different, but if Roberts can be Larry foot, then queen can be their farrier. You know what I mean? Maybe not as, as good, but that, that mold. My only, I don't want to say complaint, but I wonder if they're still spending too much and placing too much emphasis on defense. Cause it's not that kind of league. And Tim, no matter how much talent they pile up, the defense never seems to be elite. Does it? No, and it's miscast, I think, by the national media who just sees the black and gold and, and assumes they see the that, name. They yeah. see Watt. They see Minka. But Minka wasn't in on one turnover last year. That's incredible. You know, I, I'm i trying to look at their priorities, right? Because, you know, I, I know what you're saying about them throwing so much money on defense, but I don't know what else free agent-wise they would have spent money on. Maybe center, like Mitch Morse from Buffalo. But – where they're drafting and the guys they can get potentially, you only need one guy to play center. You need multiple people to play defensive back and wide receiver. And there weren't really wide receivers. They're, they're still talking to the one wide receiver I thought they might get in Mike Williams, you know? So yeah, he gets hurt a lot. Uh, he gets hurt a lot. He's a big play guy. When he's healthy, it's fun to watch, but he's not healthy often. Depends on the price. It might be a gamble that's worth taking. But my point is, like, I don't have a problem with them spending more on defense because I think there's more there to be spent on. Let me put it to you that way. Yeah, and they, they don't have a, a price tag hardly at all at quarterback this year, so they, you know, can't spend, period. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, it's, I, I don't know, no matter how, I say it again, no matter how much talent they pile up on that defensive side of the ball, the defense never seems to be elite, and I bet it's not elite again this season. They had so much publicly thrown behind Kenny Pickett, so much support. All the chips seemed to be in the table on him. Looking back on that, Mark, the way they were talking about him and their quarterback plan before getting Wilson, was that just staged? Was that just BS in case they couldn't do better, in case Russ it went was, somewhere else? It was BS after he refused to dress at Seattle. Okay, after that, they were trying to prop him up. I think prior to that, they really believed. But between that and when he was asked if he learned anything by watching, and he very bluntly said no, I think the belief in Kenny by the organization didn't die, but it kind of faded gradually. And anything said up until he left between Seattle and his departure was just, again, trying to prop him up, uh, being positive. Because what if we do have to play him? Again, people can comment on any of these topics. Steelers fans, college basketball fans, Penguins fans are going to get to hockey in just a second. And Tim, you know what? You know what's weird with the court? Not weird, but so typical of, of Pittsburgh fans and indeed the football media. When uh, when Russell Wilson signed, people said, "Oh, it's going to be a battle with him and Pickett." And you know the Steelers. Uh, would have said that had Pickett stuck around long enough. Okay, it was never going to be a battle. That's why Pickett left. Now I see people saying about the quarterback battle between Wilson and Fields. There is a definite pecking order. Wilson's the starter, period. Fields cannot beat him out. Fields will not start unless Wilson gets hurt. But people just want to imagine stuff, I don't know, for the sake of conversation, for the sake of filling time and, 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 and column inches if you're in the media, but Wilson's the starter, period. I'll go one step beyond that. I think it's part of the agenda to keep advancing Mike Tomlin as this great football guru because Mike Tomlin's a football guy and he'd never give away a job without a pure competition to earn that spot. I think that's part of it. I, I, I got to be honest. I think his fingerprints are so not evident in this quantum change of philosophy. I think... For people who know, people are going to talk about him less and less. Uh, I think this is Omar Khan and Andy Weidel. That said, when I say people who know, not many do. But you don't think Mike Tomlin's against getting Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, do you? I think before Seattle, he would have been. You think Seattle changed everything? Because Well, you know what? That's a, see, that's a point about Kenny oh, Pickett, too. Well, well, okay, the point that I'm going to make about Pickett is... We kept changing any conversation about whether or not Pickett was going to be good enough to be the long-term answer at quarterback in Pittsburgh, shifting the narrative to the positive by way of saying, well, Kenny's a great leader. He's got intangibles. He's got character. And, like, 
That's the thing that looked the worst about Pickett going out the door is how he handled himself. No question. I, I think that after Pickett refused to dress in Seattle, and by the way, Tim, how about some people are still denying that? Uh, I, mean, I haven't seen that. Is that what was happening over the weekend? They're Seattle deniers. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I think after Seattle, that, that Tomlin didn't have a hard time at all giving up on Pickett. I think he became probably dismissive. Well, I was wondering, and I never got an answer to this, if Rudolph would have stayed for the money he got in Tennessee if he knew Pickett was going to be moved. But I wonder if that was even offered and if uh, Omar Khan was thinking the whole time, we can get Justin Fields for a song anyway, so let Mason go wherever he wants. Yeah, I think they were waiting for the price on Fields to fade even more. And boy, it couldn't have faded much more. Oh, it was a six-round pick. He'd be, he'd be working the night shift at Denny's if it had, if it had faded much more. Uh, what about the Penguins, Mark? And specifically, I want you to give a thought or two. I wrote about this. Uh, I think you alluded to it as well in a column about the relationship between Kyle Dubas, Mike Sullivan, and FSG. Is Kyle Dubas backing Mike Sullivan because he really feels that way about Mike Sullivan, that he's 100% in his corner, he thinks he's the only coach for the Penguins, or is that how FSG feels and Kyle Dubas is just being the front-facing person for that opinion? Probably the latter, but I don't know. Um, I think you would you would be foolish to look at the way Sullivan has stubbornly kept a system that doesn't fit the talent anymore. He's kept that system in place, uh, and it hasn't worked. Uh, but maybe Dubas just realizes that, A, Sullivan signed through 2027, and Fenway doesn't want to pay him to not coach. And B, Fenway likes him. He's a Boston guy, all the crap that shouldn't come, but does. But as I wrote in the trip last week, if the Penguins bring back Sid, Gino, Latang, Carlson, and the coach Mike Sullivan, nothing will change. It's the same team. Look, well, yeah, I think you're probably right about that. And I, I don't know what to expect in any of these guys that they got from Gensel. I just feel like it's, it's volume and that, you know what, they need volume. They need prospects in Wilkes-Barre for sure. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think at least two of those guys will be okay, the Finn and the Russian. I think they'll be all right. And, and they do need to put What's prospects. bunting long-term, third liner? On a good team? Fourth liner? No, on a good team, he's a real good third liner. Okay. On us, he's a top six. Yeah, and that's unfortunately the case right now. Well, that's uh, just, I mean, you know, you can't be good forever, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm I interested to see how this all plays out. Tim, let me ask you, what are the two biggest stories of the Penguin season to you? The two biggest stories in the Penguin season, one, the Carlson trade didn't work out the way that they wanted it to. Um, and I would say, two, the stark realization that there's no second act to Evgeny Malkin uh, beyond that. They got you nailed it. You nailed it. That's correct. And uh, you got Malkin exactly right. I would break the Carlson thing down even further. I think Dubas took a shot at a home run and missed. I don't blame him. And he got rid of the Granlin contract, Pete, uh, you know, uh, Petrie, uh, uh, Rada, all them guys, right? All the Hextall mm. guys. But – I am shocked by how very rarely Carlson looks more than a average. Like, even for a play here and there. Like, like yesterday, I was at the game in the stands. I didn't notice him at all. The game before, he made one real slick move in the neutral zone to, to free up a pass. But that was it. I mean, he made one good play in two days. I kind of like the way. And he doesn't seem to give a rat's ass, Tim. I have never seen a good player more comfortable being on a bad team. Yeah, that's that's what I was going to get to. I, I lost you for a second there, but that's what I was going to get to, that point you made about him being really comfortable on a bad team. And I, I got to mix a metaphor here. Watching him sometimes, Mark, you know what he looks like? He looks like a guy who might win the NBA scoring title on a last place team. You know, like one, one of those guys. That's, you yeah, got to get points. Win, except he's not winning the NBA scoring title. No, I mean, but my... His yeah. numbers are crap. He's only had two goals in some unspeakably long term. I'm more talking about the 100 points he put up last year with San Jose. And one thing that team lacks, whether it's coach or dressing room, there's never a come to Jesus talk. I would feel a lot better about this team. If at some point the GM, coach, or one of the players would say, 
the way we're playing is absolutely unacceptable. Instead, we get, well, the effort was there, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Shut up. This team's achieved. It's a logo that means something. Demand better and do it verbally as the last resort. All right, let's get to some comments, and we begin with uh, Eric. He says about the Penguins, they give up a touchdown and get throttled by the Rangers, but they played hard and competed beyond sick of hearing this crap after every loss. Well, I mean, I'm not sick of hearing it. I just would prefer a, a different tack be adopted. That's the best way to put it. Uh, Calvin says, do you think the Steelers will use fields like the Saints use Taysom Hill? Could be a good way to mix things up and keep defenses on their toes. That, that's in my column, which is already submitted. Uh, but but I don't think that, that Fields' skill set is that much different than Russell Wilson's. Yeah, uh, I, Wilson's I don't. Wilson's mobile, not, not, not as mobile as he used to be. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I could see that. But I don't think it's necessary, do you? Yeah, no, they don't need to resurrect slash uh just to justify having fields he's their backup quarterback and he's a guy that they might project as their starter so there's no reason to have him run around and go out there as a tight end like Taysom Hill he no got, I don't he got traded for six round pick so his ego should be shot uh Richard says getting rid of boo boo face picket was a win in itself bringing in Wilson and Fields for almost nothing was a bonus. And look, I, I agree with that tone, that sentiment. It's great when you don't have to pay a ton for a quarterback and you can spread your money around elsewhere. I'm just saying at some point to be successful, you do have to have an expensive long-term quarterback. That's just... Yeah, and, and, and I think they will, whether it's Fields or whoever they draft in the next couple of years. But, but boy, who would have ever thought that Kenny Pickett would, would betray the team with his attitude? Well, that's what I was saying earlier. Like the the best thing about him always we thought were intangibles. You know how how often do we hear this offseason leader? He you know commands the huddle and all this how about, other stuff. How about what we're finding out now too? That the day they signed Wilson, he was supposed to work out with the receivers, and he canceled it because he knew right away he was gone. Well, he he knew he's going to ask for a trade if nothing else. Maybe he made it a self fulfilling prophecy. Now you think that the Steelers screwed him by doing that. I wonder if they do him a favor, they did him a favor by getting him out of town because the longer he's here in Pittsburgh, Mark, as the Steelers failed quarterback, the less people remember him as Pitt's conquering hero. Well, I think it was good to get him out of here for the Steelers sake. Um, and I don't care about him. I mean, Richard he's not an NFL quarterback. He's not, he could go anywhere. He's not an NFL quarterback. Bad arms, small hands, no balls. Richard added the Pens may only be five points out of the final wild card spot, but that's only because the five teams ahead of them can't win games either. Yeah, the bottom of the East is a train wreck. If the Penguins would make the playoffs, I forget the exact context, but as Daryl Sutter once said, it would just be eight wasted days. Ron asks, where are the Yager bobbleheads? My favorite conspiracy theory in a long time, Mark, is this notion that the Penguins stole the bobbleheads themselves so they could get some traction, and that Yager video proved it all. Well, you know what's funny, though? Tim, I'm not going to lie. I thought that. Did you? I, I thought it was a work, and I thought they were going to have another video like later in the afternoon of Yager driving the truck back in with the bobbleheads. Okay. <laughs> I thought they were just creating a suspense in the storyline and everybody's going to get the bobbleheads. And, and I got chastised for that by the Penguins. But I said, hey, don't blame me. The Yager video was so good that it lent itself to that belief. Dallas says the Penguins giving up so many wide open goals in front of the net, too many players watching the puck and not covering a player. Uh, we're talking a lot about forwards with the loss of Gensel. By the way, got his first goal as a Carolina Hurricane last night. Um, their defensive zone coverage is one of their many problems, too. Yeah, but, but it's not why people think. Their defensive zone coverage isn't very good, and there were a couple instances yesterday where it was awful. Like like the, the first goal by Raymond. They just all backed off. He's like at the bottom of the, of the, of the circle, and they're backing off and like picking guys up, and he just walks in and buries it. But uh, a lot of people want them to, like, you know, kill people in front of the net. No team does that anymore. It's not the way you defend in front of the net. Defenseman goes behind the goal line to battle for the puck. 
The other defenseman gets close and supports the puck. The center covers the slot. It's no longer a physical thing in the slot. Matt says, do we think the Steelers are done making QB moves? Wilson Fields, very no, low they're risk. they're bringing four more. <laughs> this is like when we have the goalie conversation. If they play three goalies at once, I don't think any pucks are getting through. Um, yeah, I mean, like, they, they might draft. I think they would probably have to draft or sign a camp arm, you know, a third guy. But nobody of consequence. I don't think they're going after anybody of consequence. No, Tannehill would cost too much. I mean, what, what if you brought Tannehill in as the veteran minimum? Tannehill on the veteran minimum? Yeah, because, like, you're not wed to I, anything I with Justin Fields. Do I don't know that, that Ryan Tannehill wants to be a third quarterback, but... Yeah, it'll probably be it'll probably be a, a guy they draft like in the fifth or sixth draft. Phil says exactly. Mark Dubas took a shot on a home run with Carlson and missed. Taking a risk on a thirty-three-year-old player is pretty foolish and tantamount to malfeasance. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. What should they have done? Kept Grandland and Petrie and Rada. He took a shot with the veterans. He tried to rally the veterans, too, by making that move. It, it, he took a shot and it failed. It's not a bad move. It just didn't work. That's and, one thing where people like Phil here, who's probably just a moron in everyday life, they, they think that good moves are the ones that work and the bad moves are the ones that don't. Okay, it's not that simple. Case in point, keeping Matt Murray and letting Flurry go in the expansion draft is the same move every single GM and coach in the league would have made. It just didn't work. When Dubas got Carlson, people, I bet, including dummy Phil here, I bet people I, people loved it. People said it was a great move. It just didn't work. Finally, Mark, understand March Madness with Mark Madden right next to PPG Paints Arena this week, right? Yeah, yeah. Thursday, I'm at the, um, at the Cambria Hotel. Excellent. It's going to be a thrill. Um. I'm trying to think. I don't even remember who the teams are in Pittsburgh now. South Carolina, Akron. Basically, everybody who has ties to Keith Dambrot is here, and Keith Dambrot's in friggin' Omaha. That's how it's going to go. You know, it's <laughs> funny, too, because I uh, I feel hypocritical talking about basketball. Like, on the show today, I feel like yeah. I'm old. And, like, I'm watching Duquesne yesterday for the last 10 minutes because, you know, the United-Liverpool game ran over, and I was pissed for a while, so I didn't turn on. So I watched, like, the last 10 minutes. And I'm like, wait, who's that guy? Who's that guy? I don't know who any of these guys are. I'm, gl I'm glad they made it, but I don't know them. Yeah, you didn't see their best. You saw probably their worst overall performance of the three games in Brooklyn. Like, they were pretty good the previous three days. Yeah, but VCU couldn't capitalize. They just couldn't. Yeah, yeah they did a really good job defensively and held the all-conference player that VCU has to. I, you know what I thought, Mark? I wrote down the score since I was on the air doing the game for 970. I wrote down the score when the streamers fell down by accident. Were you watching at that point or no? Yeah, that was, no I wasn't watching yet, but that's still great. There's red, white, and blue streamers, and all the Duquesne fans started to go crazy. My first thought is, this why, is an why'd omen. They go crazy? Why'd they go crazy? Did, did they think it was a TKO? <laughs> yeah, they're going to cancel the game. VCU has decided they don't want to play what, anymore. Did we win already? It's a literal sign for the heavens. <laughs> yeah, uh... Didn't they get some streamers back up there for the end, though? They had confetti by the end. So I think they just took the streamers, shredded them, took them back out, and dumped them. That's what I think they did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, good for good for Duquesne. What's that one, the Czech kid, Neches? Jakob Neches, yeah. Yeah, you know what? His stats weren't great, but every time he did something, it kind of resonated. He had three big plays in each of the last three days down the stretch, uh, two on defense previously, and then a couple big hoops when they didn't get any hoops at all in the second half against VCU. Yeah, he's... Didn't he hit a three yesterday? He had two threes, and one of them was huge when nobody else was yeah. hitting anything. Yeah. That's what I mean. I thought I thought he was about as responsible for, for winning the game as anybody. And he can guard one through five. He's six eight, and he's a good defender, can guard point, can guard center, and anywhere in between. You know who he reminds me of is, is Vakaitis from Semi-Pro. <laughs> well, he's the one, I don't know if you saw the quote from Keith Dambrot, where he's trying to tell the players to relax going into the semifinals. And like, right. one, of, one of Keith Dambrot's fallback phrases is loose as a goose. So Trey Williams, who's been coached by Dambrot for three years, just started screaming in the locker room, loose as a goose, loose as a goose. And Jakob Netz just got real quiet and said, what's a goose? He had no idea what a goose was. 
<laughs> Bakaitis, flash to the high post. <laughs> no, the high post. Scoochie, show him where to go. This is Madden Ben's Unfiltered. We're brought to you by Rush to Crush. More than a ride and submission. Join us May 19th for the Rush to Crush Cancer bike ride. To register, go to rushtocrushcancer.org and help us in the fight against cancer. Join the ride.